whether you're a newbie gardener or you're a seasoned vet when it comes to gardening. But we gotta figure out at some point, what kind of soil do we have? So in this video, we're gonna go over two different options of testing out your soil. The home version of a, just a soil jar test, or if you want to go really extra and really get a know about what your soil looks like, you could do the soil test. Let's go! What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And whether you're a newbie gardener or you're a seasoned gardener, it doesn't really matter because in the end, we all have to test our soil. This is the part where it doesn't matter if you're a newbie gardener or not because I have to test my soil too. We all have to test our soil because throughout the garden season, of course, you know, depending on what you're growing and how you've been treating your soil, will all depend on if, what kind of nutrients you're gonna have in that soil toward the end of the season. Now, a lot of the soil testing is ideally done in the fall time because the fall time is when we have to start fixing it up, amending it before the spring. If you're starting to fix up your soil at springtime, you're late, you're late to the game. So fall time is where it's at and we gotta test our soil. Now the first one is going to be, of course, the jar test. Now the soil jar test is not gonna be as extensive as your state extension, but I'm gonna get to that later on. This is just for the home gardener that wants to have a good idea, at least, you know, a rough estimate idea as to what type or texture of soil do you have. You have sand, silt, clay, a lot of those major things, major granule pieces that kind of make up your whole soil. That's what we're gonna be testing out here. Now another test we're gonna do, I don't have it on here, but it is a soil texture test. I know it sounds really nasty, but of course we're gonna be making mud pies, we're gonna be having some dirty soil, wet soil, all up in our hands. Now that's just gonna let us know, again, just by feel. Remember, this is not really, really detailed, but again, we're getting a good idea as to what's in our soil. Now of course, the main test, which will be the last one that I'll show you guys, is state extension. Of course, every state has an extension office. Just go check it out, whatever state you're in, they all provide a you know soil test if you want to. But for the average gardener, we just need to find out some you know few key information points about our soil. Now in the soil, of course, it's gonna be a bunch of broken down materials. We need to figure out how much or what the percentage is of that material in our soil. Now the first test is super simple. There's not much you can do to it except from just grabbing a bunch of soil and water. And we're gonna be combining that together. Now essentially we're gonna be making a mud pie. We wanna get a good texture enough so we can get a feel for what type of soil that we have. Just a simple texture test we're using our very own hands. It doesn't take much to learn about our soil. So I'm just gonna be adding a little water into my dirt, which I think that was way too much. Um, poof, that was way too much water. If you think about it though, when it comes to the grittiness, even with the water, you'll be able to tell. It'll, it'll feel like sand, like fine little granules of sand. Oh my gosh, I'm totally making a mud pie right now. Oh, this is gross. Anyway, then maybe you would get the consistency of like a Play-Doh where you can grab it and you can you know, squeeze it and it stays in place. Now, if it stays in place, that's because you have a lot of clay. I am noticing a lot of granular, so I'm assuming that there is a lot of sand in my soil. Now, of course, you don't, don't feel like you screwed up if you put too much water in your bowl. Of course, I did that because, <laughs> why wouldn't I, you know? But still, we can learn something from it. The next soil test we're gonna be talking about is the soil jar test. This one's pretty cool. This one is still settling right now. I'm gonna get back to that in 24 hours. You need your soil, you need water, and a marker. Also a ruler, but for the ruler is not gonna be for when we start to figure out what percentage is. But for now, that's all you need. You're going to pick the soil that you want from whatever section of the garden that you're going to be using. Now, of course, this is just an idea, rough estimate. The soil test from the state extension is gonna be more accurate getting more samples from different or you know larger areas. Now let's just say that you felt sand in between your fingers, right? With the soil jar test, we can actually figure out what's the exact percentage of sand that you have in your soil. So the soil jar test is gonna give you more information. Are you gonna hang around with me, Peanut, this time? Maybe a second time. Oh, there goes Chip. He's the usual. I was today years old when I found out that you can actually use some sort of like laundry detergent or dish soap inside of your soil jar test, you know, to help separate all the, you know, the granules of the soil. 
I didn't, when I learned about soil jar tests, I did not know about this. So I'm actually going to be testing both of them. Are the results going to be the same or they're not going to be the same? Let's test it out. Now, of course, you don't have to sift it if you don't want to. You just really don't want a lot of the big particles. You don't want rocks. You don't want anything that has not been broken down. Of course, this sifter is not a good one because it's too small. I found something that may work better. Of course, I'm going to have to disinfect the heck out of this or just basically just buy another, uh, whatever you call this thing. This will work a lot better for getting those big pieces out. See? Look at that. Oh, that worked out way better. Ideally, you would want it to kind of be on the dry side, you know, to kind of separate each individual granule. But we all know about my patience. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Ah, well, maybe a little less than half, a little less than half. This line right here is the two cup mark. So it's a little less than that, all right? But now I'm gonna mark it so I know where my original soil line is. So it's gonna be right here. I marked it down because I want to know where the original level of soil is before I added water because this will change as I put in the water and then all the, you know, the different areas or elements separate. People have told me that you really could use soap in it. So I really want to know the difference. I mean, does it really make a significant difference if you put in soap or not soap to test your soil? I guess we're going to find out. You know how I love to experiment. So one of them is going to have the soap. Now I have to mark it so I keep track because you guys know I am not going to remember. This one has soap and this one has no soap. Now we're going to add the water. All right. I'm going to fill it up all the way, not all the way to the top. We're going to fill this one up with the no soap. Oh man. Okay. Now, of course, we shake vigorously like a lot like a really a lot Ugh, a lot i really want to separate all the granules okay i have a dog party right now chip i do not want to accidentally hit you in your face bruh and you don't care you don't care if you get accidentally hit in your snoot all right okay one there and now the soap oh chip get out of the way bro i think i'm gonna add more water there you go freddy there you go, that looks a lot better. I did put a lot of soil in there, so I just want to add a little more water. Okay, there we go. The soil line is still the same. It's just a different amount of water that I put in there. It's only been a few minutes. This one is separated real low down here. So I wonder, I wonder. I'll see y'all later in 24 hours and see what happens. Many unbearable hours later. Okay, here we go. This is the one with the no soap. This is the one with soap. Notice the difference. I mean, with the no soap, that is an obviously clear lines that I'm seeing right here. With the soap, I don't see clear lines. I mean, I see a little bit for the clay, but everything else, I don't see no clear definition of where it stops and where it starts. Over here, there's it's just obvious. I see a difference. You can automatically see the color difference right here. You notice how this right here in this whole section is a lot darker than over here. This bottom layer, my friends, is sand. This is silt, and this is the little section right here. That is clay. Notice the one with the soap has a smaller clay line than it does over here. Now, I don't really know. See, I'm not going to go by this one. I'm going to be doing the calculations off of the one that with the no soap. Um, Raman, what are you doing? <laughs> Bro, can I have this back? Oh, I needed that. Come on. Focus, man. Focus. Focus, Holmes. Oh, I guess so cute. Anyway, now it's time to measure the exact amount that is in each level. Go get a ruler. I'm using my measuring tape. And of course, we are going to measure every different section. So, of course, my first bottom sand level is going to be one inch. And whatever your level is here, we're turning it into a decimal. But of course, being that it's just one, I'm gonna leave it as one. Two little lines there. Now, of course, do your calculations. That's exactly what I did right here. So of course, my total, remember that total amount of soil that I was talking about in the beginning? Total amount of soil? That's the total amount of soil. It's 2.62. Of course, that does not look like a six. Yeah, okay, whatever, that's a six. The silt was one inch and one eighth. I converted that, so that was 1.12. 1 
and now the clay it was really tiny that was only literally one eighth so that converted to 0.125 you take the amount of sand divide it by the total amount of soil and then times it by a hundred that's how you get it, all right? Of course, I did a lot of screw up. This is from another thingy, whatever. Of course, like an ass, I forgot to put times 100. You got the amount of sand, which is one. Divided, you divide it by the total amount of soil, which is the 2.62, and then you're gonna times it by 100, and that'll give you the 38%. The silt, we're gonna take the total amount of silt, 1.12, Divide it by the total amount of soil, times it by 100, and that gave me 42.9%. This is my distraction. That right now is my distraction. And he's bothering, pissing me off. Pissing me off with your cuteness. For the silt, of course, I originally put 42.9, but it was actually 42.7. This automatically tells me that I have 38% worth of sand in my soil that I have 42.7% silt, and then I only have 4.7% clay in my soil. Now again, this does not tell you about the nutrients, but it tells you all about what makes up your soil right here in, you know, in large bulk amounts. Now we've reached the state extension soil test. Now this is the one that I really wanted to do because this one is the most accurate. Now of course, this one does not tell you the same information that the soil jar test does, nor the manual texture test. That is two different things. This one gives you the nutrients. Now that is what I was really looking for. Now this test is just beautifully wonderful and highly informative. So if I can really suggest anything, please go to your state extension and do the soil sample test. I mean, it really is gonna give you a boatload of information. But also, I would suggest doing the soil jar test as well, together, because this is not gonna tell you that information, and this is not gonna tell you that information. Now, I'm sure every state extension office is gonna be different when it comes to what it looks like, but maybe it doesn't. But when I first got mine, it actually looked like this. You have options, what you wanna test. Are you gonna be testing your front lawn? Are you gonna be testing a new plot? Are you gonna be testing an area for your veggies, flowers? The state extension offers additional testing that you can add on to the original testing right here. Now it has a long list. These are optional, but if you, depending on what you're looking for, depending on the information, it would be wise to kind of pick up or grab an extra test or two. I picked up an extra test and that was organic material. I wanted to know, being that I've already been working on that plot for like one year already, I wanted to know, do we have decent amount of organic material already in there? Do I need to add more in there? What's going on in that plot? So, of course, I added, I paid for the extra $5. Luckily for me, I already did my soil test. Now this is telling me right now in a new plot that my soil pH is below optimum. Okay, my soil pH was 6.6. .6. .6. Now I know that may sound a little low side because you know how um, the pH level, the neutral is like in the sevens. With a pH of 6.6, .6, I can grow, you know, a few different things that like acidic soil. If I wanted to grow flowers, I can grow some azaleas. Also, if I wanted to grow some fruits, I would grow some blueberries because they all love acidic soil. Now, of course, I still need to figure out how to read my soil test more better. Just call your state extension office. They'll be more than willing to just kind of explain this further because, you know, in the beginning, even for me, I still have to kind of figure out exactly how, you know, how to properly read this because it does bring you a lot of minerals and nutrients down there in the percentages. So, my gosh, this does bring me back to nursing, but also, this does bring me back to biology. Remember, the key to gardening is all about soil health. I should have been a soil scientist, but had I known that, I wouldn't have gone to nursing. But why can't I just learn about soil biology now? It's never too late, right? It's never too late to learn something new. So why not? I really hope you liked this video and you got some good information out of this. I really try to provide as much information to the best of my knowledge. Of course, I'm very limited as to how much I know, but I'm always continuing learning, which means I'm always going to be giving you that information. I love to teach. What can I say? I love to share my knowledge. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. 
I drop a video don't really know yet because my life has been changing up a bit. Also, if anything, when in doubt, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I have the website, theadhdgardener.com. Also, I can't even mention Patreon because I still don't even know what's going on with that. I have it now, but I don't know if I'm going to be continuing it given the information that I will be giving you guys next week. So until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time, I will check you out on the next episode. Go test your soil. Your soil needs it. Peace and love.